Now we're hopping over to the refinement section in the What's New in Rhino 6 for Mac modeling and editing video series. Refinements refer to new subtle commands or command options within existing commands. Rhino 6 includes thousands and thousands of these new additions. We have selected only a few to get you started. Let's check out the distribute command. You'll find the icon by, by hopping over to the new NV6 toolbar and clicking on the icon located in the center of the toolbar, Distribute. This command allows you to select a minimum of three objects and spaces them evenly across a certain direction. The command has different options. You can use Center, which means the spacing will occur from the middle of the bounding box to the neighboring object's bounding box center, or Gap, which places the spacing between one object's bounding box edge to the neighboring object's bounding box edge. In this example, let's keep to center, spacing the objects 30 units apart in the X direction. Make sure to run the command again to see the different options for distributing objects evenly on a Rhino seaplane. Now we'll move down to another very nice addition to Rhino 6, command line math. I will hop over to the front viewport. In Rhino 6, the command line can now also operate as a calculator. You can use it to enter math functions such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, or even math formulas. Let's look at this quick example. You'll notice I have a drawing on screen that represents an open bookshelf. I have the different heights for each one of my shelves, but it doesn't include the overall height needed to scale my reference image appropriately. So I will run the polyline command and dock the starting point down at the bottom of the drawing. I'll now use the calculator to start adding all the different heights. You might have also noticed that certain heights repeat themselves. So I will start by entering 15.4 times 3 plus 8.7 again times 3 and pressing enter to total that up. I will now align the second point in the y direction and select my line to verify its length. You'll see the result printed at the bottom left corner of the screen. 72.3 millimeters millimeters as that is the unit system of my current file. Yet my drawing is in inches. The command line calculator can also be used for scaling objects from one unit system to another. To do this, with my line selected, I'll run the scale command selecting both endpoints for the total length and entering 72.3 inches. By entering the unit system in the command line, Rhino will scale the line appropriately. We can check this by running the length command, changing the unit system to decimal inches and selecting the line. Here we go, 72.3 inches. I'm now ready to scale the reference image to the total size. The next feature we will cover is Add Guides. The icon is also over in the new NV6 toolbar, right by the Distribute button. Add Guides allows me to create a series of infinite construction lines by placing two points on the seaplane. For that purpose, I can enter coordinates, activate grid snap to snap to my seaplane grid, or deactivate it to freely place my points. As you click, you'll see these subtle gray lines appear on screen. These guides can be very useful when sketching an object, placing geometry, or needing to align control points. 
Once the command validated, the lines disappear from screen to unclutter the view. As soon as you run a geometry creation command, such as curve, the lines appear again. At this point, you can use object snaps to snap to them, allowing you to sketch precisely. They will also appear when dragging control points. To delete them, you can simply right-click on the same icon, which runs the Remove Guide command. Then, click on the guides you want to delete, or on the Remove All option in the command line. Add guides can be very useful to allow maintaining tangency to objects, objects aligned, or as reference guides for quickly sketching. Let's talk about Infinite Plane. iPlane, or Infinite Plane, is a new command in Rhino 6 that proposes different options in the command box to quickly draw a NURBS plane by using C-Plane templates, vertical option, and so forth. Now the hidden feature with this command is its ability to be used within other commands. So let me go ahead and undo these and show you a couple of examples. I'll run the trim command, and as a cutting object, I will type IP, which is short for infinite plane, and press enter. I am now running the infinite plane command. This can allow me to quickly build an herbs plane that can be used to trim my object away. Once the process is completed, I can end the command and my phantom plane disappears. Let's try another example. I will run the Boolean split command, selecting my sphere object as the object to split, and as a cutting object again, I will type IP. Let's choose any of the pre-configured options, such as this one. My sphere has now been split and capped into two separate objects. These are just two examples of different commands in which you can nest the infinite plane command. Make sure to try the IP shortcut whenever you're in a command that needs a plane. This can save some time creating and deleting unnecessary objects. We'll now move down to the last option for the refinement section, OneView. OneView, also called the single viewport mode, allows you to stay in the perspective view while working on different planes. To activate it, go over to the new v 6 tab and run the OneView icon. Once executed, you'll see that a tag appears up in the right-hand corner of the viewport. It indicates the current C plane. And now, as I rotate my view around, the view snaps to different C planes. I can now create my geometry while staying in a single window. For instance, I'll create my rails, I can also control point edit, then switch views to snap accurately, and switch planes again to project my curve creation on the right plane. One view allows you to stay in a single environment while switching projection planes. To disable it, run the command again and uncheck the enabled option. This is all for our refinement section, but keep in mind that Rhino includes many, many of these new settings. When running commands, check all the different options available, as you'll be surprised at the many settings that will help you accelerate your modeling workflow. 
keep tuned for our next video on history.